If you find your digestion is off and you're not going number two, you're not pooping or moving your bowels on a daily basis or as often as you would like, then one of the reasons could be there's not enough fiber. And when we talk about fiber, we have to talk about the two types of fiber. Hi there, I'm Dr. Michael Kay from the Center for Functional Health. And today we're gonna to talk a little bit about some digestive tips that can help you. So let's start with fiber. So there's two types of fiber. There's soluble fiber and there's insoluble fiber. Soluble fiber absorbs water and other fluids and it creates a gel-like substance that helps to prevent constipation It feeds the good bacteria. Where insoluble fiber does not dissolve. So soluble fiber does dissolve, insoluble fiber does not dissolve. However, it's important because it creates a bulk to the stool. So insoluble fiber actually helps to prevent diarrhea and loose stools. That is why when you have diarrhea or loose stools, your doctor may say, hey, add fiber to your diet. I know we're told that fiber makes you go, mean makes you poop. However, insoluble fiber actually helps the stool to have a better bulk and insoluble fiber helps to sweep out the intestine and helps you to eliminate completely. Now you find insoluble fiber in vegetables and grains where you find soluble fiber in beans, apples, oats, and strawberries. Now, if you want to sneak in some fiber into your diet and you don't want to take a fiber supplement per se, you know, think about like the skin of an apple or skin on the potato. So if you eat the whole thing, skin included, that adds fiber to your diet or, and you know, think about like um, seeds to a salad that would also be helpful or great to add insoluble fiber. Now, when we're talking about fiber, insoluble or soluble, it's important that you drink a lot of water and you stay hydrated because if you take in this fiber and you don't drink water, which helps to uh, break it down, then you're gonna end up having constipation. That's the opposite thing that you wanna do. Now, here's the caveat. Insoluble fiber can be found in whole grains. However, there are gastrointestinal disorders such as inflammatory uh, bowel disease, such as Crohn's and ulcerative colitis, IBS, that's irritable bowel syndrome, whether it's associated with diarrhea or constipation or mixed. And then there's intestinal hyperpermeability, aka leaky gut syndrome. When you have these, you may need to avoid grains altogether because they can contribute to the ongoing inflammation. And this is why we work with folks on an individual basis to create a bio-individual nutritional profile based upon their clinical presentation, their clinical complaints, blood work, and especially a stool analysis, because not one type of diet or nutritional protocol works for everyone. So again, grains are important. However, there are certain gastrointestinal disorders where you want to avoid eating those grains. All right, so now let's talk about the next thing that impacts digestion and is often overlooked, and that's stress. So when you have stress, that can actually slow everything down and have an impact on your digestion. It can lead to malabsorptions of nutrients, and you, don't, you want to do your best to really squelch the stress, because stress can contribute to a lot of dysfunction, not only in, in the gut, but also in other areas of our body. When we have increased stress, we have increased cortisol, and that an increased cortisol can occur in the setting of having chronic stress. So the cycle just continues, and we want to put a stop to that. So what can we do to create that environment when we're eating to help digestion? We want to be able to break the stress and, and eat in a calm manner. So Think about that environment. Where and when are you eating? So when, meaning are you eating in a rush all the time? You want to be able to chew your food thoroughly because the more you chew your food, the better it is for digestion. You want to take the time before you eat to just slow down and recognize what's around you. So it's being mindful of what you're eating. That's also extremely important. And then who are you with when you're eating? If you are eating with an irate coworker, then that's not a healthy setting environment. 
if you're scrolling through your phone or looking at the computer, or if you're working through your meals, all of those type of environments is not healthy to have a proper digestion. So you wanna be able to start thinking about that environment, how you're eating, when you're eating, what you're eating, what's around you, instead of just you know powering through your lunch and not even thinking about your eating. So it's about being mindful. Another great way to address stress is uh, taking walks, meditating, yoga, all of that's important. And I know a lot of my patients who actually take a walk after they eat. And there have been studies to show that when you walk after you eat, that helps for better blood glucose regulation as well. So reducing your stress can definitely be a major step to improving your digestion. So again, think about what you're eating, think about when you're eating it, and think about your environment. So being mindful of what you're eating. Okay, now let's talk about the third aspect of digestion that's really important. That's drinking enough water. So a lot of my patients say to me, you know what, I don't like the taste of water. And I'm thinking to myself, well, what does water taste like? So if water tastes like something to you, then you know what, it's probably not a good taste in water. So a good key to elimination and digestion is is definitely hydration, right? So you want to be able to drink your water. Now, do you need to have that, you know, eight ounces of eight, eight ounces of water that's, you know, uh, eight times throughout the day. So 64 ounces, that was a big thing. You need eight glasses of water. So no, you, you don't need that. And you don't need to drink, you know, half your water, half your body weight in water either. So it's a matter of just being consistent with drinking your water throughout the day. Because if you do not drink water, that can lead to constipation. So water helps to keep the muscles functioning properly. That helps to move the digestive food through your intestines, through your digestive tract. This is called peristalsis. And when your body senses that you need more water, your heart and brain actually pulls water from your digestive system. And that makes those stools drier and harder to pass. And that's another thing. You don't want to sit on the toilet and push, push, push because it's not good for the heart and it's not good for the lower back either. So the solution is simply drink more water. Now, if you say, listen, but Dr. K, I don't like the taste of water. I'm gonna say, well, listen, infuse, meaning add berries and lemon or mint or cucumber to your water. That's also good. And you can also, you know, listen, drink caffeine free herbal teas. That's great as well. Now, what I like to do that helps me drink a lot of water throughout the day is I use electrolytes and a specific product that I use is called Element, and that's L-M-N-T. And that helps me drink my water throughout the day. So I'm able to get at least close to 40 to 50 ounces of water a day. It has a nice flavor to it and they have different flavors. So you can look at that up, it's L-M-N-T. Now, what about alcohol? Well, alcohol actually acts as a diuretic. So you really wanna avoid alcohol and you wanna avoid any of the sodas or any of the juices, anything that's artificially flavored, anything that has you know, fake sugar in it, avoid that altogether. And now what about coffee? So coffee is can act as a laxative. So some people really respond well to it. Some people do not respond well to coffee at all. For some people it causes reflux. And if a patient likes their coffee and they experience some reflux, I always say, you know what, you can try low acid coffee. A lot of folks don't know that there is a low acid coffee that you can purchase, which is also helpful. So I, I do like coffee. I think you can make your coffee drink a great power drink. And I think if you're going to do that, then that's great. So how do we do a power coffee drink that can help digestion? that can help uh, your bowels, that can keep you regular. So that's having a good organic coffee, that's adding some brain octane oil to it, uh, maybe some uh, five mushroom blend, some maca powder, even some dark chocolate. So there's a way that you can make your coffee really work for you. And instead of working against you, like buying just a sugar laden coffee. Okay, so that's it. That's some tips on digestion. So if you're dealing with constipation, if you're dealing with diarrhea, if you're dealing with bloat, if you have things like brain fog, skin issues, things that you may not even realize are related to digestion, 
please give me a call and I'll help to figure it out and we'll create a plan. All right, that's it. And we'll see you soon.